you might have asked or heard this question. Why did God give us desires and then consider some of them sins? Why? Why did God give us desires and then later say that we shouldn't do certain things? Most probably, you thought about it. Usually, this question is accompanied by another. Why did God put the tree in the middle of the garden if he knew that Adam and Eve would eat of its fruit? Once God is wise, omniscient, he knew it, and still he did it. Why? Let's try to understand. Now, in the Garden of Eden, all know the story. The woman got involved in a conversation with the serpent. Then the serpent told her, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? You can notice that the serpent's question was mixed with a lie, a true with a half lie, a truth with half a lie, or a half-truth with a lie, which is a lie in the end. God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. God hasn't said that. And Eve correctly corrected him. We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. Look at the serpent's word. Isn't that what people think? Go on. There will be no problem. Go on. There will be no problem. Am I right? You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. The same talk that goes on today in the world, God wants to hide something from you. God is forbidding this from you because he knows that there's something good on the other side if you eat of the fruit. So God is not trustworthy. God wants to rain on your parade. So you must ignore what God is saying and go after your desires, your pleasures. This was the serpent's, Satan's, conversation with the woman. And you know the rest of the story. Now, let's come back to our days. Why did God give us desires and then consider some of them sins? Why? There, in the Garden of Eden, God placed only one tree they could not touch. Am I right? Of all the other trees in the garden, they could eat. God gave man authority over all the earth and to do everything he wanted and gave everything to man's power except that tree. Today, after man has touched the tree, that single ban has become thousands of prohibitions, not on the part of God, but on the part of man himself. Now, the man, per se, does everything he wants. Now the man follows all his desires, does not care about God and does what comes to his mind. How many prohibitions are there in the world? I ask you, how many there was before sin? One. One prohibition. The tree in the middle of the garden. After sin, how many prohibitions there are for men? I believe it can reach millions. Why? What am I talking about? What kinds of 
prohibitions. Now the man can do all things, for example, he starts to feel some pain and the doctors say you must stop eating sugar, you cannot eat sugar, you have high diabetes levels, you cannot eat this or that, there are how many trees in that? Just out of the doctor's mouth, how many trees does the doctor forbid you from eating from? And at times, it's even a actual tree, a natural food that is too sugary, the person cannot eat. You cannot eat this, you cannot eat that, you need to stop doing this or doing that. And the person leaves the doctor's office with a list of prohibitions and now they need to take a medication produced by men that will attack the disease and also harm the health. Supposedly will heal the infirmity, but also bring side effects and they will have to take other medications to combat the side effects of the first medication and so on and so forth. Or how many times is a person forbidden from doing what they like because there are laws that prohibit that. It's forbidden to do this or that. What are our laws? Our laws regulate the human behavior. At least they try to regulate the behavior of people. You are on the road, then there's a law for the speed limit. Just of traffic laws, there are hundreds of them that you must follow. When you travel, you are subject to laws. If you don't have a visa, you cannot enter certain countries. You cannot enter. God gave the whole world to men. But today, men cannot cross the whole world. Have you ever thought about it? How many restrictions? were there before sin and how many are there after sin. I will not even talk about countries, I will talk about Brazil or your country. There are places in your city or maybe in your neighborhood that you cannot walk by or you cannot enter because it's dominated by a gang or criminals and you're not even part of any criminal organization, but you don't want to be mixed with it, you don't want to be caught in the crossfire, so there are places in your city, in your neighborhood, you cannot walk by. Look how many restrictions, prohibitions there are. I could add many more. Financial ones, there are restaurants you cannot go in, hotels you cannot go in, there are many things you cannot do because of the human restrictions. Then you have the answer to those initial questions. Why did God give us desires and consider certain desires forbidden? Why? Why did God put that tree in the beginning of all, in the middle of the garden? Why? Precisely to save us from what we have today. Currently, we have a world in which you do everything you want, in which the popular advice is follow your heart, you are your own person, do whatever comes to mind, chase all your dreams. Today we live in a world that the human follow all they want, chase all they want, and the result of it is slavery. There are numerous restrictions imposed by themselves, not by God because God has nothing to do with this thing of prohibitions, you cannot eat these, you cannot walk by certain places of the city, this is man himself. What man blames God, he must do to himself and to other men. So human intelligence was given to us, intelligence was given by God to the human being to think, to think, I rather the tree in the middle of the garden. For me to recognize that I'm not God, I have no condition to be God, humans try to 
pretend that they are God, and the result is that they are like a devil. So I need a tree in the middle of the garden so that I can respect that there is a God above me that is more than me, he can do more than me, and if I have sense, I must obey him. Because if I don't do that, the alternative will be disastrous. Men will end up destroying themselves, moved by the devil, but the devil didn't take the fruit and put down the woman's throat. He only suggested, he only had to share a fake news. The rest, men and women, did. Thousands of years have passed and the human being didn't learn and keep on repeating the story. If today's video helped you and you know someone that could benefit from it, share it with them and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you may do so now. See you later.